Welcome. In front of me is a Realme GT 7T, and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks you can do on this phone. So, to get started, we're gonna open up our settings, and in here, let's navigate first to wallpaper and style, which will be a general section where you can customize the look and feel of your device. Now, this will include things like, for instance, the already included themes, which include things like uh, fonts, wallpapers, uh, icon packs, and so on. Or you can just swipe down and customize each one of these things individually yourself. And, and here, going quickly over a couple of them, uh, we have things like, for instance, always on display, you can customize it, that. Uh, and also, if you obviously want to use it, you would enable it right here, as it is turned off by default. Then we have uh, fonts, icons. If you have icon packs installed, they will show up right here. Oh, actually, I'm going back in here. We also have additional options like changing the size with them, showing or hiding the names, and so on. Uh, and then going further down, we have colors, which are basically uh, these accent colors, like the blue ones in here or in the settings, uh, these ones right here. So we can change this. As you can see, if I, for instance, uh, like something like this, now they're all blue. Now I like the default one, so that's what I'm going to stick with. Uh, next we have fingerprint animation. Um, if using under display fingerprint sensor, we can change how it looks like. Uh, you just get a quick little example. There is also the option to basically turn it off, uh, the animation, but I want to uh, kind of uh, give a little bit of an info. Even if you turn off the animation, the bright light that is there when you're pressing your finger will still stay, as this is how the sensor sees your finger. So you cannot get rid of that one. That's just generally how the sensor operates. Uh, but you can get rid of the additional flashiness happening around it, like you would have, for instance, right here. And lastly, we have edge lighting, just the edge of the panel lighting up for notifications and other stuff. Now, moving on and moving on to the uh, home screen and a lock screen after a slightly quick sneeze. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, sorry for that. Um, so in here, we have things like the home screen. Uh, this allows you to choose the style, either up drawer or Apple-like style. And let me see, choose whichever one you like. I personally like the up drawer, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. Um, then moving down, we have another cool option in here, which is the icon pull down. Actually, no, this isn't the one that I was thinking of. This is one-handed mode. Uh, you can use this. It is very wonky though. I do want to make that absolutely clear. Especially when using gestures, expect some very heavy jank. Um, now what I was looking for is this right here. Swipe down on home screen and we have global search, but we also have other things like shelf or notification and quick settings. This is personally what I like to have. So when you swipe down anywhere on the home screen, it will always bring down your toggles and notifications. Now going back and moving now to the display and brightness, here we have light and dark mode at the very top and you can enable either one of them permanently or you can tap on the schedule, turn it on and in here you have two options under sunset uh, to sunrise or on a custom timer, which means that depending on which one you select, the device itself will swap from light mode to dark mode, for instance when, you, when it gets dark outside, which is a pretty nice option to have. And additionally, if we keep on scrolling down in the display section, we have screen color mode. This allows you to choose how saturated the colors are on your display. Uh, by default, we are in vivid mode. So if you find the colors to be a bit overdone as they are quite vibrant, to say the least, you could select something like natural. Or we also have the pro mode, but holy hell is pro mode even more saturated and not very pro, I would say. So natural seems to be the more color accurate option and I think this probably is the most color accurate one though I'm just judging this by look and under more oh, actually we have the more accurate one so cinematic uh, uses the p3 uh, nope the reds are way too red and the, yeah no these are I wouldn't say very good um, so outside of that, we also have the satur uh, not saturation, but tint to the display. So we have default called warm, cold obviously will be more blue, warm will be more red, uh, or you can just 
do this yourself. So choose whichever color you want. I'm gonna stick with the default. Now there might be another option in here. Yep, adaptive tone. Uh, so if you enable this, it will ignore completely what you have selected right here as the device with this option will automatically be using the cameras to define the warmth of uh, the light that is around you physically. So for instance, with like my studio lights, whatever, uh, it would see that it's just kind of like almost neutral colors and would it adopt the screen um, tint to this uh, environment right here to match it. So this option will basically become inaccessible to you uh, when adaptive tone is enabled. And when you enable it, you can kind of see it becomes a little bit more, at least for me, yellowish. And isn't necessarily matching the white background right here. Although it could. Because these actually are relatively close to each other. No one on camera only. In person, holy hell, is it as far as it can be from, uh, from close. Now... Uh, moving further down, we have things like uh, screen resolution and refresh rate. Let's start with the resolution. We have high and standard. Uh, personally, I probably recommend going with the standard. This will be a lower resolution, uh, but lower resolution also means that you have uh, lower battery consumption. And I genuinely myself cannot see a shred of a difference between uh, high and standard. And uh, to be fair, the resolution drop right here isn't necessarily that significant. We're going for 2362 by 1080 to or from 2800 uh, 1280. So we're not really losing that much resolution. Um, but you might actually get just a better battery life for something that you I believe genuinely no one will see. Or maybe I'm just blind. Anyway, next we have screen refresh rate like I mentioned and we have actual couple options right here high standard and auto select now I'm not sure why high is selected by default as uh, this is the one that runs uh, or will consume the most amount of battery so by default I believe auto select would be uh, enabled by default but I could be wrong about this and uh, with that we have also the standard and high now for people that don't really see much of a difference between 60 and 120, stick with the 60. For people that do see it, stick with auto select. Auto select means that the device will run up to 120, and if it can't, uh, or if there is no reason for it to be running at this refresh rate, for instance, like right now, there's nothing moving on the screen, it will drop it down to preserve battery life. Um, 120, or the high one, basically would run, says up to 120. Uh, but usually the high runs permanently at 120. If it's running at lower than 120 when it doesn't need to, then there's no difference between high and auto select. So in this case, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the way you can actually check this is by going into developer options and enabling the show refresh rate on display. Uh, but okay, I'm not gonna stick with that. Um, next, we have notification and quick settings and in here, status bar. This allows you to customize things like, for instance, the toggles that are visible right here in your status bar. So you can hide ones that you might not want. Now, idiotically, for some reason, NFC is the one that is turned off by default, which is, I believe, for people that don't know what NFC is, this should be enabled by default, uh, just so you know that it's enabled. Uh, it's basically a near-field communication, which allows you to, uh, by getting very close to something, connect to it. And for instance, that's how you can uh, do the contactless payments in stores, uh, connect Bluetooth devices, and other things. It would be very freaking nice if you know that it's enabled and not have it hidden away. Uh, some devices not only don't show the toggle, they also hide the NFC from, uh, from the panel right here. But we have it visible on the second page. Now, and there's other things that can turn off, like for instance, do not disturb mode, uh, Bluetooth and so on. Uh, basically toggles that you might have enabled all the time and just don't care to see them in your status bar as they are enabled all the time. And another thing in here is the battery that you can customize. So we have uh, battery style, horizontal, vertical, loop, and tone show. I want to also point out when choosing this option, be aware that only the horizontal option has the battery percentage option to be inside. Every other battery style has only these two options, either don't show it or have it outside. 
and lastly we have the notifications right here so we can change how the notifications right here are being displayed by default it shows you just three notifications you can compound it to a number and if you have more than three notification it will actually show you for instance five uh, or you can just not show at all uh, probably you wouldn't recommend selecting that as it is a quick way for you to know if you have any notifications at all so there we go and i don't think there's much left uh, here to show i believe there's one more thing which would be under system and update and system navigation and here we have the gestures and buttons now we also have a couple additional things uh, for gestures so hide the gesture guide bar which is this little bar at, at the bottom right here if i toggle that on hide it, it gets rid of it for a cleaner look to the device and we also have the option to increase or decrease the sensitivity of the back gestures, which is the swipe from the sides. Uh, next, circle to search. For this, we do need to have the bar enabled, as the way you do it is by first holding it and then circling what you want to select. Uh, one more thing while talking about circle to search. Uh, this is a very nice option for you to be able to just select text even if you don't want to search anything uh, as the name implies what you can do is just hold it and i can just generally select the text copy and paste it and you can do that for images or anything else so it's a very easy way for you to be able to copy some kind of text um, that you usually might not be able to um, but you're still limited to Gemini only seeing applications that allow it to to see it. So for instance, things like Netflix will always block it because Netflix is a piece of shit. Um, I just selected for someone. Okay, never mind. Um, so so yeah, that basically sums it up. Now, if you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching. Thank you.